Hello everybody, so today I'm going to go over how I reprogrammed Ryko's uh, cartridge toner chip and this is a follow-up video from my last video when I showed how to refill the cartridge. So in the video I show how we replaced the chip and all you do is you just cut it out and put in a new chip, the blank chip. But if you don't want to do that, you can actually reprogram the chip because the chipset itself uses the I2C communication bus. This photo right here shows the layout of the chip. From left to right, you can see that the first tab is the SCL, which means it's the clock. Next one is the SDA, which is the data. Then the VCC, which is the voltage. You're supplied with 5 volts. And then the last is ground, GND. Here is the actual chip taking out, and when you look at the back, this is the black chip, which is called chip K. Um, there's four colors, and and each chip is a little bit unique because it has a unique address to it. They all use the same chip in the middle, which is a EEPROM 24C02, which means that it has two kilobytes of memory. The, comp the circuitry looks a little bit complicated. It has a lot of these black little dots and this orange little square thing in the middle. All of these are just resistors and capacitors as I have the values uh, written down. Now these resistor values and capacitors are not necessary to a chip, but this is an original chip and they put extra, I guess, protection uh, in the circuitry. This next photo shows a replacement chip these are the chips that you would normally get through the mail when you purchase toner and the chipset included. So this chip right here is the C chip, which is the cyan chip. And you can see that the resistors are all gone and the paths are pretty straightforward. So if you look at the chip um, from top left to bottom, one, two, three, four. One, two, three is the address, four is ground. Then from the right bottom up, five is uh, the address line, 6 is the clock line, 7 is the write protect, which is I think doesn't connect to anything, and then 8, pin 8, is the VCC line. So next, at the very top, I have these four yellow squares. They show where those four tabs uh, connect to, and from left to right, it shows ground, and then the next one is VCC, then the next tab is the... Um, address line, pin 5, and then finally it's pin 6, the clock. So the hardware I choose is the Arduino Uno. Um, there's I'm not going to go over the details of the Arduino Uno, but there are a lot of great YouTube videos out there that introduce what the Arduino Uno is and what it can do. Um, if you are a DIYer and you've never programmed before, uh, definitely programming on the Arduino Uno will be the best experience you ever have because it is it, it is very well designed and well written and it to set up the board literally it's just download the software connect the board to a USB port and you can start programming away there's very little troubleshooting or configuring to figure out how to start using uh, this handy little device right here the Arduino Uno, right here I show the original one, cost $22, um, but there are, because it's open source, so this next video, this next photo right here, you see that on Amazon sells a lot of uh, clones of it. Um, these clones are legit, they're actually all really good boards too, they're usually half the price. Um, I'll have two links, the original Uno link and uh, Amazon, Amazon link. Uh, for you to uh, review and this next photo right here is the wire layout of the Arduino Uno to this little square chip right here this square chip again it's just connector paths and I'm going to show you how I made it later on but the wiring is pretty straightforward it's just the 5 volts go to the 5 volts the ground goes to the ground pin and then the SDA and SCL go to both pin A4 and pin A5. Now that's the simple setup. 
I myself, I use a little bit more complicated setup, and, but it's not really that much more complicated. All I did was I add two pull-up resistors. So <clears throat> here is my messy setup. As you can see, the Uno hooked up to my pull-up resistors and then finally connects to my four pins that I will attach to the cartridge connection. And here is a close-up. It's just four copper wires. I just looped them around a piece of cardboard. This right here is actually a hard plastic with cardboard in the middle. And all I do is just, again, take four copper wires, make some twists, and at the back I actually took some glue and glue it down so it doesn't move around. So here's a video where I show how I reprogram the chip. Um, and you can see me handling this connector. And all I do is I just lay the connection on top of the four pads to have a good contact. And after I have a good contact, I just press the reset button on the Arduino and it starts the program all over again and it rewrites the chip. It is that simple. Next, I'm gonna show how I wrote the code. So this is, again, the chip itself is an EEPROM and the communication protocol it uses is the I2C communication. There are four chips, one black, chip K, chip C, chip M, and chip Y. Their I2C address is 83, 82, 81, and 80. So whenever you program the chip, you will have to change the EEPROM I2C address value right here. So right now I have it set at 83. That's to reprogram the black chip. But if I change it to 80, then I will be reprogramming the yellow chip, chip Y. So I'm going to go and change it back to 83. Now I'm back to the black chip. Now, after you change that value right here, that's the only thing you have to change because everything else I made it semi-automated. Uh, after you change that value, it knows how to update everything below. After you change that value, you just have to compile and upload and that's it. But if you do want to understand what's going on right here, I'll just do a, a brief explanation on the code itself. So right here, we're including wire.h library. This is the I2C library. You have to include that in order to, um, uh, to write to a chip. Now here are four arrays. Each one of them are 128. What I did was I did a data dump on each of the new chips I got. Um, and I found out that these are the values for each chip. Now, if you do a data dump on yours, it might be slightly different for a new chip. Uh, I, of course, I couldn't figure out what all these values mean. But what I do understand, it looks like um, these first five values are almost always the same. This could be a 14, I think, and it would still be the same. And then after that, this one right here, one, two, three, four, means that it is either a K chip, a C chip, M chip, or a Y chip. I guess I could simplify the code by deleting all three and then just changing that one value right there, but it doesn't matter. Here's a data dump of all of them. You can tinker around if you want. Here's where the Arduino code starts. Um, basically, first I have a switch scenario, and again, I'm looking at which chip you're trying to program. So let's say if you're trying to program a K chip, um, then it will go to case 83, and I'm just copying all of the data on the K chip to this dummy write data array. So write data array now has all the information of the K chip. And then next, so I start the I2C, then I start the serial. So this right here, the serial, if you don't know much about it, this is just so that I can see stuff on the screen. So anything that says serial.print, I'm just trying to display stuff on the screen to know what's going on. It has nothing to do with the I2C communication. And all that matters is right here. Here's when I, where I do the I2C write. I go from each address. So I start from address 0, and then I write the data into it. Then I go to address 1, then I write 
the next data into it all the way until I completed uh, 128 bytes of data written into it. So after it's all written, then next I do a read. So again, I have another function called I2C read. And then again, I go through each single address to read the data. So if both datas match, then I know it was a successful write. And here are the two functions. The I2C write, again, it requests for an address and the data. Again, this address is the EEPROM address, not the I2C address. And here's the data that needs to be written into it. So first, I want to transmit to the K chip, which is address 83. That is the I2C address. Now, when I'm communicating with the K chip, I tell it to write. I write to its address, and I write the data to it, and I end my, end my transmission. I give it a slight delay, and then I just repeat this process over and over again. The read is very similar. Again, I want to talk to the chip 83, and then I give it its address. And when it's available, I try to read that address information. So that's pretty much what all the code is. I do have a, a one other function down here. Don't worry about it. It's just what I use to figure out which address this chip uses. I'll leave a link below in the show more content um, that has a code that you can just download the code. So after you download the code, you can see in this screen right here, I have the serial monitor on the left and the code on the right. When you compile and upload the code into the Arduino Uno, the very first thing it's going to do is it's going to try to write and read immediately. So I, I normally don't have enough time to position the connection pad to the toner. So just go ahead and let it do it. Just go ahead and let it run. Um, after I have it, after that's done, then I position the wire, the, the pads onto the, the toner itself. And then I press the reset button. When I press the reset button, then you can see on this next screen that it attempts to really write and then read from the chip. So that it's just that simple. In this final video, all that I'm showing is that I refilled and reprogrammed all four toner cartridge and it's working. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, good luck reprogramming your chip.